My Straight Dog family, when you hear that theme song, uh, you know it's time for another edition of Straight Talk. And time for me to wish you a very pleasant night, wherever you are, in St. Kitts and Nevis, and wherever you are throughout the entire Caribbean region. Wherever you are in the world, as a matter of fact, because we are on the World Wide Web and we reach you wherever you are in the world, and we reach and touch our Ketishan and Nivision diaspora that are all over the world. Some of you are in Africa. Some of you are in Europe. There are some of you in Asia. And there are a whole lot of you all over North America. So I'm at liberty to say good night. I can say good morning, uh, Norma, Danny. Yes, in the UK there. It's morning time, yes. And I can say good afternoon because one of such greetings will be applicable to the region in which you now find yourselves. And for those of you who may have joined me for the first time, first timers, welcome to Street Talk. That's heard every Monday and Thursday from 8 to 10 in the PM. And just to inform you, my first timers, again, welcome. And to let you know that Straight Talk is a public service program that facilitates and promotes all issues of national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic, and or political issues. On Straight Talk, we do have a forum to express yourselves freely. Unless it's in the process tried to get St. Kitts and Nevis back to that enviable position of being number one or one of the freest countries in the world. On this program, we try to raise the level of national consciousness. We try to raise the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights, to their responsibilities, and certainly to their obligations. My name is Ian Patches Lybert, and I thank Almighty God for blessing me with yet another opportunity to join you in conversation on yet another occasion. And my Straight Talk family, we are a participative program. By that I mean we include your calls and your emails. And if you're so minded to call, the numbers are 663-6672. That's a local number. If you want to call that number from overseas, just add the area code 8669. Or there's this US number, 646-829-6672. And for those of you who like the cloak of anonymity, I call you, we provide you access via our email platform. Some who like to hide behind the keyboard. We ac- you can access our email, straight talk patches. That's S T R A I G H T T. A L K P A T C H E S at Gmail dot com. And I always present a thesis, a short thesis, each program. I present my dissertation. And for this episode I have been I have titled it There's a Cost for Peace and for Conflict. 
And my Twitter family, I'm sure you will agree that in every society, conflict will always be found. But today in St. Kitts Nevis, though, there is a unique basis of conflict in that in most cases, it varies from being personal or interpersonal and or political. And as a nation, we pay to keep peace all over the world. But I'm sure that many of us are not aware of that fact. Yes, St. Kitts Nevis, as a member of a member state, I should say, of the United Nations, St. Kitts Nevis is legally obligated to pay its respective share towards peacekeeping around the world. Yes. Each country's contribution at the UN is decided through a special scale of assessments under a complex formula that member states themselves have established. And every three years, the 193 member states of the United Nations collectively decide on a formula known as the scales of assessment, as I said, to determine how much each country contributes to the United Nations regular budget and to peacekeeping operations. So there are two main budgets of the United Nations, the regular budget and the peacekeeping budget. And for the regular budget, each country's contribution is based on a formula intended to represent the country's capacity to pay. And that, the formula starts by using a country's share of global gross national income. Adjustments are then applied for factors like their debt and population with a minimum and a maximum determined for least developed countries and the largest contributor, the United States of America. Now, the peacekeeping budget is also determined by the formula, but includes additional adjustments such as whether a state chooses to contribute troops. I remember uh, many, many years ago, St. Kitts Nevis contributed troops to Haiti. Uh, some years back. But my Shredog family, in October 21, the Administrative and Budgetary of Fifth Committee agreed that the capacity to pay must remain the core principle that determines how much each member state must pay to the United Nations regular and peacekeeping budgets, but deferred on how best to readjust scales of assessment for the period 2022 uh, to 2024, particular in wake of the global COVID-19 pandemic. But our focus will be nonetheless keeping the peace in St. Kitts Nevis, which is not the same. And as I said before, it comes or it becomes personal or interpersonal and most times political. But we'll get back to that when we get in depth with our, uh, our thesis for tonight. But let's first consider our usual observations in review. And this is a time for the first timers in particular, when we highlight the issues of the day, we do some reflection, we may then ask a few questions such as what was accomplished, how has it helped others? What has changed since? And what can be expected next? Also, what new we have learned as a people. And my first observation tonight relates to the Cameroon Nationals. And we saw a release from SKNIS that on June 8th, 2023, a few days ago, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, UNHCR, granted the Cameroon nationals asylum seeker status. Now, according to the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, the asylum seeker status, the definition 
to wait is an asylum seeker is uh, is someone whose request for sanctuary is yet to be processed therefore in addition to being protected against forced repatriation to their home country the cameroon nationals are entitled to continued humanitarian care while the asylum requests to the UNHCR are being processed. And the government of St. Kitts and Nevis will continue to collaborate closely, we are told, with UNHCR and provide the Cameroon nationals with the necessary basic humanitarian services. The official seeker, asylum seeker certificate, beg your pardon, were hand-delivered, we are told, to the Cameroon Nationals at noon on June 10th, 2023. And the extended humanitarian provisions the government has agreed to provide were also clearly communicated to them. And this arrangement will remain in place for 90 days while the asylum applications are in progress. The Cameroon Nationals, we understood uh, went on a hunger strike which they started on the afternoon of June 9th, 9th and they did in fact indicate that they will continue until they have been met and their wishes were they wish to be issued rather with a United Nations identification card to speak to the United States Embassy or the Congress and to be sent to their Cameroonian friends and family in Texas, U.S., as they claim they are specially protected under U.S. law. But it was explained that to the Cameroonians uh, that these demands fell outside of the remit of the government of Senkis and Nevis, saving except the granting of access to communicate with the U.S. Embassy. So we are following this story <clears throat> with the Cameroonians and we'll see what will, uh, what will be the outcome. But my straight dog family, very interesting times as it relates to immigration or migration, whatever it is, my straight dog family. And so too, the Haitians, forget there, don't forget there was uh, a state of execution as the Haitians before were groups before were repatriated to Haiti. But this was something different at this time. Remember that boat that that apparently malfunctioned in the area of Gallows Bay in Nevis. And since that time uh, their basic needs have been met. I think there's some fifteen Haitian nationals are still being housed in the the St. Johnson Community Center. As a matter of fact, that has since changed because for humanitarian reasons, the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, we understand, took the decision to release the Haitians from detention and into the care of the local Haitian community as of June 10th, 2023. And the Haitian community in the Federation had previously indicated as a collective that it is both ready and willing to fully accommodate its fellow countrymen and women. So that's the update uh, coming to you as it relates to the Haitians and the Cameroonians that are in our midst and my straight dog family very interesting development. Our third observation for tonight, I refer to it as the water threats. We've had two water threats, my street dog family. And the first one uh, relates to a Facebook post that was uh, publicized under the caption or under the title of the Honorable 
Dr. Terence Drew. And it read my straight talk family, and I quote, the water truck will be delivering water to St. Peter's as it did last week. The fire truck delivered last night and this morning. The drought continues. So let us do our best to conserve water. Drilling for water has begun in Keon, which will benefit the people of St. Peter's as well. We have restarted what was abandoned for the past seven years. Hashtag water is life. That's posted on the Facebook page of our Prime Minister, Terence Drew. But did we read right, though? My street dog family. A fire truck to deliver potable water. Dr. Drew has to be joking because a fire truck should never be used to deliver water for human, human consumption. Never. And this is coming from a real doctor. This reminds me of the, the test kits that he tried to import from China. But the question we ask, my street family, the fire truck used to deliver water as indicated by Dr. Drew. Is it rated? Is it certified for the storage or delivery of possible water for human consumption? I dare say, hell no. This fire truck cannot be rated or certified for the storage or delivery of potable water for human consumption. So what is Dr. Drew trying to do? Kill the people in St. Peter's? Kill the young babies? And we call on the manager and water engineer of the Water Services Department, Mr. Cromwell Williams, to address this serious matter. It is a serious matter, I submit. And the country needs to know. The public has a right to know whether the Water Services Department is advising that water be delivered by Rosenbau Timberwolf Fire Truck and whether it's safe for human consumption, safe for washing our dishes, cooking our food, brushing our teeth, and making baby formula and so on. And this is a serious matter. And we trust that Dr. Drew, because he's the Prime Minister and Minister of National Security, on whose authority falls the Fire Service Department, we trust and hope he did not use his authority to instruct the fire trucks to deliver water in St. Peter's or anywhere for that matter. And the Water Services Department's manager and water engineer, Mr. Carmel Williams, I'm sure he knows better. And if he knows better, he must tell the country whether this was approved by the Water Services Department and himself, Carmel Williams, as a trained hydrogeologist and water engineer. The other water threat was sent out today to citizens by the pompous minister who has responsibility for water in this country. And we know this pompous minister who he is. And here's the threat that was sent out to the people of this country. We are in a drought. There is simply no water to spare. I am advised by Bede that equipment to drill the Kayon well are being positioned and well drilling should start in earnest over the coming weeks. The hope is that this well can give up to 500,000 gallons per day. The department is prepared to restrict water to clients 
that have excessive amounts of usage in this time of drought. Department is prepared to restrict water to clients who have excessive amounts of water usage. How does one determine that nonetheless? But that's a serious threat, very serious threat to the consumers of water. This public good here in St. Kitts, in St. Kitts. But Bede, he mentioned Bede would deliver 500,000 gallons per day. He did put in a, a, a clause there. If he said the science is correct, I think those were his words. But the country must be aware as well that Bede has yet to commission a well in Shadowell with a yield of some 300,000 gallons per day for almost three years now. Bede has not yet rectified that well. The quality of the water found by Bede in that well was considered unfit for human consumption by the Bureau of Standards. Why has not Bede rectified the issues with the water quality over there on that Shadwell well, supposed to yield 300,000 gallons per day. But they paid for it. So I'm warning, warning you, Keonites, and all who are in the environs, keep your eyes open wide. If bead Underline, if Bede finds water in Keon. The last time they found water in Shadwell, the water, according to the Bureau of Standards, was considered unfit for human consumption by the Bureau of Standards. So very close scrutiny must be paid to the quality of any water drilled by Bede. Any water drilled by bead. Bead, I would say in a nutshell, from ever since I heard that word, it's bad news. Bead means to bleed the treasury. Bead is a company with one objective to it. As I said before, extract money from the treasury and not water from the underground. According to Brantley, since 2017, Bede has extracted $2 million from the Navy's treasury. And there has been no water and no money return. Um, as I indicated publicly before, we had made a commitment to have an additional three wells done at a global cost of 10 million EC dollars back in 2017. In fact, it was in August of 2017 that we paid to a company called Bead just over 2 million EC dollars as a down payment. Bead has never come to do the work for the government. And so we don't have our 2 million dollars and we don't have any wells. We have decided to take legal action against Bead that is ongoing. So it has not been for want of trying in relation to water. Bead, I say my straight dog family, does not have a good reputation in St. Kitts and on Nevis. And we'll hear much more about this company. As they understand, they have mounted their jewelry rig to embark on an operation to drill for water over there in Cabbage Tree. Keon. In our fourth observation, Jeffrey Hanley, 
the minister with responsibility for shelter or housing and shelter, whatever it is called, attempted to provide an update on his corrupt housing solution, but said nothing except that the team unity government engaged the East Coast Housing Development Limited. And how many of you listened to, to uh, uh, the parliament this morning when I turned to ZIZ this morning, I thought it was bulletin board in parliament. But some other time for that. But Jeffrey Hanley reported that the government before engaged East Coast Housing Limited, which tells me this, my street dog family. It must be clearly stated, <laughs> Madam Deputy, that the East Coast Housing Development Limited of Trinidad and Tobago was engaged by the government of St. Kitts and Nevis before the general elections that were held in August 5th, 2022. I want it to be clearly heard that before there was a housing minister in this country by the name of Jeffrey Hanley, the government of St. Kitts and Nevis had engaged the East Coast Housing Development <laughs> Limited of Trinidad and Tobago. That's a fact. That's a fact, he stated. But what Jeffrey Hanley did not say is whether the project was approved or it's approved of. And that's something he needs to come to the nation and say. And if it was approved, then are you saying that government is continuous? So you're continuing the program? So why are you continuing that housing program and not the Bastard High School? Why is the government not continuing the solar farm and continuing the housing program. But the country must know whether engagement means that the project was approved before you became Minister of Housing. He also said, Jeffrey Hanley, that there were 3,000 applicants. Today I wish to report to the nation that the Ministry of Housing and Human Settlement has engaged in a stakeholder-driven partnership initiative which has expressed aim <coughs> of providing 2,400 housing solutions for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Information reveals that present demand for homes to the National Housing Corporation is greater than 3,500 applications at this time. Our people are aspiring to be homeowners and it is the obligation and responsibility of this administration to satisfy such demand. Then, what Jeffrey did not say is whether these 3,500 applicants were bankable by Street Dog family. It were is, they? It is not government buying the houses or NHC buying the houses. It's individuals buying the houses. These are, this is the solution for persons who are bankable and can take a mortgage loan from a, a credit union or a bank and they can purchase their one bedroom house for 111,000, a two bedroom for 213, and a three bedroom for 297. 
So, Jeffrey Hanley, opinions are not facts. Advance the facts to the country, which is your constitutional duty. What Jeffrey did not say as well, what Jeffrey was also silent on, was the construction of the two model homes. What about those two model homes, Jeffrey Hanley? Two model homes will be built that the contract contemplates. During the construction of those model homes, the local contractors will get to learn the modern technique, the special technique that is being used for these reinforced concrete slab homes. If, if the government is not satisfied with the homes or the, or the construction, whether they could withstand um, you know, serious hurricanes and earthquakes and so forth, which the government has experts who can verify that, and whether NAC is not satisfied with the homes, and by extension, the end user, the, the persons that these homes are going to be sold to are not satisfied with these two model homes, then the contract comes to an end. And I can't see how that is not the... the, the, the best way to protect um, the end user. So, when are we going to see the construction, Jeffrey, of these two model homes that will determine whether the contract continues or whether the contract comes to an end? But those are my observations in review for tonight, my sweet dog family. And there are more questions than answers. And that's something we have grown accustomed to this new Labour Party or Jew Labour Party. They have revised the definition of transparency. But I'll embark without hesitation on my thesis tonight, which I said I have titled there's a cause for peace and for conflict. And following four homicides in two days and the 24th homicide since Dr. Drew assumed office 10 months ago as Prime Minister, he addressed the Federation for the first time on the issue of national security and the spike of gun-related heinous crimes. His address took him a little over four minutes to say absolutely nothing. And instead of advancing his government's plans to fight this code of crime in the land, Dr. Joe utilize his time to politicize the subject. He politicized the subject matter, then esconded to the Bahamas to help that country celebrate 50 years of diplomatic relations with the United States of America. Of course, it was an opportunity as well for a photo op with the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, who will do nothing to stop the illicit trade in guns and ammunition between the USA and our Caribbean countries. Perhaps his mind was focused on catching his plane to the Bahamas. So guided by the rules of brevity, he only had time to make an absurd statement that further revealed his ineptitude as a leader. Because when the Prime Minister can say this, my street dog family, that's the only conclusion one can come to. The present upsurge in criminal activity is a natural and direct result of the monetization of crime management. Similar methods were tried and failed in Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Mexico, Haiti, and El Salvador. In every occasion, it resulted in what we are seeing right now in our federation. The alternative pathway program or peace program 
as it, it is colloquially called, was never tried any place but St. Kitts and Nevis. Many in the Caribbean wanted to get a template of our program. So to say it has failed in Jamaica and those countries called is nothing but a blatant <laughs> lie. It shows the extent to which Dr. Drew will go to politicize crime. Although he says, although he says that he does not put crime in politics. But that's not true. As you know, Madam Speaker, I've been in the politics for about a decade. My first time in Parliament. And I never, ever sought to make crime and violence a political issue. But if this program was so bad, according to Dr. Drew, tried in Jamaica, tried it wherever he called, and fail, then why on earth is Labour continuing the program? Why? Contrary to the propaganda peddled in social media by irresponsible naysayers, the Labour Party administration did not stop the peace program. So why you didn't stop it if it was so bad? And when are you going to roll out your new program? To date, you have not spoken and got advice from the National Security Advisor, Major General Saunders, who is so critical to the program. I understand, Dr. Drew, you are biding time until his contract expires. But when are you going to roll out your own peace program, your own version of the peace program that you for 10 months now, each time you're asked, he said, next month. Last time you were asked, he said, in a month's time. I'm going to launch the new aspect of the program in about, I will say, within a month. Because mm -hmm. the program needed to be studied, understood, and then start to put structures in place um, to do that. So I can say that we are doing that work, and we have been doing that work, and those details we will give in terms. We will change the name of the program, for example. has to. We have a different structure in terms of the management of the program, which we, which we have to. We have different aspects to the program in terms of training. We have different tracks, small business tracks, community development tracks, counseling track, mentorship track. These different tracks so that we can track our people, um, um, those who are the participants in every area, to see where they are at. But all that is by... Is part of the program. If you study the program, the initial engagement team had counselors from Nevis and counselors from St. Kitts, whose names you won't call for obvious reasons. The initial engagement team and the program ensured there were businesses. In Keon, for example, there was this cooperative established. Loans were granted through the Development Bank for transport, for rentals, and the list goes on. So why are you fabricating, Mr. Prime Minister? But in this world full of strife, any nation which tries to reverse the order of priorities when it comes to dealing with peace and conflict does so at its own peril. And this is what is borne out right here in St. Kitts Nevis, especially in the past five months when we had 16 murders and sad to say there will be many more. Thank God for Team Unity that mounted the CCTV cameras around the country. We understand that there was a recommendation to mount 400 or 600 more cameras and you refuse, Mr. Minister of National Security. But thank God those cameras were mounted and 
two arrests were made in terms of the two homicides. But peace, my sweet dog family, is an un, is undoubtedly an essential precondition for all progress. And that in turn presupposes preparedness for conflict or for war, be it gang war or other types of war. According to the World Economic Forum, we would all be better off in a world where armed conflict was avoided. The Institute for Economics and Peace opined that around $14.4 trillion was spent in 2019 on armed conflicts. And that's about $5 a day for every person on the planet. Just over 10% of global G GDP is being spent on containing, preventing, and dealing with the consequences of violence, as well as the 1.4 million violent deaths each year. Conflict holds back economic development. It causes instability, widens in inequality, and erodes human capital. In a report titled The Economic Value of Peace for 2021, the IEP says that for every death from violent conflict, 40 times as many people are injured. The world's 10 most affected countries are spending up to 59% of their GDP on the effects of violence. Central American and the Caribbean have had an 8.3% negative change in economic impact related to violence. In five regions of the world, the cost increased in 2019. And the biggest jump, believe it or not, was in Central America and the Caribbean, where a rising homicide rate pushed the cost up 8.3%. The question, therefore, to ask ourselves, my straight dog family, is whether peace is a thing for which it is worthwhile to pay a price. If not, it must be one of three things. One, it can be obtained without peace. Two, it cannot be obtained at all. Or three, it is not worth having. Which one of us at this present moment would be willing to stand on any of these three propositions? The Labour Party, while in opposition by its actions and criticisms of the program, the peace program in particular, which has the capacity, the capacity to create the behavioral changes that are necessary in the society, said loudly, Peace was not uh, peace was a thing not worth having. They perpetuated rumors that the government was paying money for peace or facilitating gangs with loans obtained from the engagement process. Nothing further from the truth, as the idea of promoting peace in St. Kitts Nevis originated from the gang members themselves. So what, nonetheless, if gang members were paid? The United Nations has paid thousands of dollars in cash to Serbian rebels in northern Bosnia, Herzegovina in an unsuccessful attempt to remove barriers to deployment of peacekeeping troops to the volatile area and this was disclosed by UN sources. The European Union and the World Bank contributed hundreds of millions of dollars to try to stop the war, partly by creating jobs and resolving the grievances with rebels, I believe it, it was in Mozambique. Was that pain for peace? At times, 
different organizations and countries have used all means necessary to stop the bleeding and dying of their citizens. And if we could hear in St. Kitts, our young men in particular, who were dying in the streets by creating jobs, if you could do that and giving them an opportunity to earn a living through legitimate means. So what? Above all, any country devoted to the cause of peace must have faith that it is worth having and in a measure at least can be obtained. Nor can such an organization believe that unlike every else, everything else in the world, peace can be attained without effort and without price. Each advance in human welfare involves adjustment, compromise, and sacrifice on the part of somebody. Public order entails limitation of individual action, in some cases compulsory. The administration of justice does the same. If peace is worth the price, how large and what kind of price is it worth? Examine the war now raging in Ukraine with its vast costs, its destruction of property, its devastation of cities, the suffering of soldiers and civilians, the irreparable loss of life has shown more than ever that peace is worth a very large price. How large a price in money is it worth? The opposition Labour Party peddled rumors for years that gang members, as they said, were paid to keep the peace. This was so unfortunate as the team Unity Administration ensured an holistic approach that included the cabinet approval of an alternative lifestyle party fund which involved the engagement at risk and marginal, marginalized beg your pardon, individuals in properly structured legitimate activities. This particular fund was administered by the Development Bank of St. Kitts and Nevis. It provided finance and capital and technical assistance needed by the poor, disadvantaged, and marginalized groups who want to engage in business activities and whose projects or proposals had to be approved. It allows qualified parties to realize legitimate endeavors and take ownership of their actions. It provided loans to qualified recipients and grants to designated and identified community projects. Essentially, what it was set up to do was to provide capacity for poverty reduction, which is a critical component. It was to have been a cat catalyst that fostered an alternative lifestyle to crime and violence while advocating and upholding civility. It generated maximum, maximum employment opportunities and reinforced a culture of business ownership, industriousness, legitimate endeavors among the target group. People have basically entered into agreements to clean up community areas. For example, and those were done based upon market price payments once the job had been verified and done to a satisfactory standard. Look at all those abandoned properties in Newtown, in Irish Town, all around the country that were cleaned up. My people, there is a price of conflict to the human race. The idea is to examine this cause, not only in terms of the deaths and casualties and the economic cause borne by the people involved, but also the social, developmental, environmental, and strategic cause of conflict. In most cases, 
countries measure and analyze the economic and broader development costs of conflict. While this conventional method of assessing the impact of conflict is fairly in-depth, it does not provide a comprehensive overview of a country or a region embroiled in conflict. My street dog family, I said sadly, these heinous crimes will continue. The homicides will continue if this government don't get a grip of this situation. Bodies will lie in our streets, bleeding. And it's sad to say that. But I have to tell you the truth. And we must conclude, therefore, that there's a cause for peace and a cause for conflict. That's my story tonight, and I'm not going to change it, my straight dog family. I will open the lines and entertain your calls and your emails. The numbers, as I said before, are 646 829 or 869-663-6672. Our email contact is straighttalkpatches at gmail.com. I always like to employ you before I open the lines, and I'll do so in a few seconds, as I said. Respect others, and of course, to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. Let us try to be fair to all concerned. Let us try to build goodwill and better friendships. Let us ensure that the things we say and or do will be beneficial to all concerned. And in the process of saying and or doing those things, let us strive to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. At three before the nine o'clock hour, we go to the lines and say good night to our first caller. You are live on the street talk. My caller. I don't think uh, a caller. Are you there? Oh, I think. I, I think we have lost a caller. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that, my dear brother Nabu, calling there. There's something radically wrong with that call just now. I trust you can can call back, uh, brother Nabu. Just won't hear you on this side of the pond, and. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I press disconnect instead of accept. I'm sorry, dear, my brother, for all this. But uh, yes, I'm sorry about that. It's uh, two before the nine o'clock hour. If my brother can just call again, we'll get you live, uh, my brother. I do, so, um, do apologize uh, again, my brother, uh, for that little hiccup there. With the call. But the lines are open, my straight dog family again. The lines are open and the numbers 646 829 6672 and or and or 663 Uh call you live. Hello caller? Are they call? Seems you're having some difficulties with my calls here tonight. What's going on? Uh, are you hearing me, they call? Okay, seems to be having some difficulties with my calls. That doesn't happen in a long time. I uh, wonder what's going on tonight. My street dog family. Uh, here's what. 
I'm going to shut this phone down and come back again. But uh, my overseas lines give me some problems here tonight. I do apologize for that, my straight dog family. And what's going on here? Are you there, caller? I am peaceful, my brother, yourself? Good, 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 man. I get caught off of my phone. It looks like you're having some challenges. Yes, have a little challenge. What? I don't know why. But uh, you know, you know, you know, they don't want people to talk the truth. And they don't want uh, this program to expose their competency. You know? But they can't stop. No monkey or monkeys could stop this program. <laughs> now, my beloved brother, first let me just the two young brothers and sisters to a lesser extent. My beloved young brothers, man. Those of you who are involved in these illegal activities, homicides, my beloved brothers, stop it, man. Stop it. Stop it. Have respect, love, no more standing for you. Amongst our young people. And it's not just in the Amiga and Ovalia alone. This is an international problem in the African communities globally. Got to stamp out this thing, brother, this courage. So my young brothers, man, let's stop this thing. Let's stop this. Whosoever can help you in what form, shape or form, go and seek help, man. Go and seek help. It's hard for religion to hear every time our young brothers are just falling and flies. That is no good. No good. So my young brothers, man, Less on a path of righteousness, love for overstanding, respect. You have a problem, you only better talk it out, or you get some mediator, mediator, sit down and talk. It's only the team unity, and even go beyond that. My young brothers, this cartoon administration. That is mismanaging thank its neighbors. All the amigas I prefer to say. You know, you can't put trust on them. They have no love, no respect, no regard, don't care about African people. It's just a new water in the same old dirty bottle, same old backward philosophy, neo-colonialistic philosophy. So they ain't gonna change anything. Do not depend on them because they are not for change. Meaningful change. All that they want to do is to enrich themselves. That's the modus operandi and their mission. That's all. So don't depend on them, my beloved young brothers. Let's do the right thing, man. Stop this, this killing, man. Stop this killing. Let's do it now. Brother, continue to listen. Keep up the great work. Pan Africanism, our parish. One love, my beloved brother. Yes, one love, my brother, as well. To so apologize for that slight difficulty there with this, that overseas line, but we, we've uh, managed uh, to cope. And I trust that the quality of the call uh, was intelligible or understandable. Uh, this email in the meantime reads, Patches, a certain past minister who had fell out with the Labour government but is now back in their bosom has no moral authority to speak of crime. Some years ago, the police took up for questioning 
some guys on Hosford Road for selling some expensive watches. When the former minister heard of it, he went to the police and told the police that it's he who gave the guys the watches to sell. When the chief investigator asked him for invoices or other evidence of ownership, all he did was hang his head down and walked out the station. Yet this man wants to play, he is so innocent, but he has no moral authority to speak of crime in this country, reads that email. This other email reads, my straight dog family, this government lack the basic needs a government should have to, to provide for its people. They are not even holding themselves accountable. He came on the radio and blamed the peace program. But what are his ideas? What is he or they doing to curb what is happening under his leadership? What leadership, I may ask, because that too is one of its elements they are missing in this labor government. The government is not for the poor and the vulnerable. They're painting a picture, but what's in the dark must come to light. They need to deal with the things that are affecting us internally, but they always are out of the country. Some are blind when it comes to this government, hoping they would do better. It will never be better than Tim. That police press conference numbers were not adding up at all. I will have to listen again, but they feel all conditions are labor, therefore they think all uh, mumu with this email. My straight talk family, it's now seven minutes past the nine o'clock hour. We are looking at our theme for tonight, our dissertation tonight, as I intimated earlier, was titled, as I said before, that there's a cause for peace and for conflict. And I made mention of the four homicides in two days and the 24th since Drew assumed office some 10 months ago. Then he, it forced him to address the nation for the first time on the issue of national security and the spike of gun-related heinous crimes. It took him a little over four minutes to say absolutely nothing. Let's go to the lines and say, caller, good night. Are you there, caller? Yes, caller. Yes, Patches. You're like Patches? my brother. Yeah, good night. How are you? I am peaceful. Yourself? Okay, I'm peaceful too. Um, let me start here, Patches. Nabo, good night, brother. Good night, Jam Dong. And all who listening to Straight Talk and who have a clean heart and a clear conscience, good night. I know you all are not condoning wrong. First, let me say about the leadership of the government in St. Kitts Navy. Sorry about that. Because, Patches, let me say this here. I've heard you said many a times that St. Kitts is one of the most peaceful country was. in the world. Was. Uh, a free country. Was. But it doesn't seem that way with the leader of the government, Mr. Terence Chu. That, that's why I said was. Okay. Oh, oh, oh you use the word. You was, was, okay, was, past was. tense. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you for that. Answer line, eh? Yes. Because this man here, when he was campaigning, he was talking about when he gets in there, he's going to be integrity in public life and good governance. And the other one there is, um, what he just say? Um, what the other one again? He just say anyway. 
or transparency and no victimization. But this man is behaving like a Taliban dictator because you're going to tell me people are free to choose whatever political party they want. They will find out whether the decision is a good, successful one or was a failure. We are alone after our mistake. And so many people in St. Kitts has been sacked, fired, totally from the job, who work for the government. They haven't break any government laws. They haven't thief anything. They go and they do their work. But just because they was Jew and he cabal them, they would back in, not back in him and his labor, labor cabal them. He gonna fire them and turn them away. So people now are afraid to follow their conscience and go where they want because what? They're watching their job. And I, I, you know, I can see what I mean. People have responsibilities to take care of. And so therefore, when you take away a man job or, or a person job, you know what you're sending them to do? To do illegal things to survive. People don't set out to do a lot of things that they are doing to survive. But because they lose the job and they lose the benefit that they were getting, you know, to help to take care of the responsibilities, Others don't who are working, they are very cautious and afraid to go certain places and do something. All because of this Taliban man Joe. And this country wasn't given to him. And he got to stop it. He must stop this foolishness, man. Come on. People are, people are right, have a right to do what they want. As long as they, did not, they do not break the law. Government go and government come. And government who come, they're supposed to continue. The, 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 the plans that the government that gone has in the pipeline, as long as the plan is something fruitful and, and progressful for the country, carry it on. Don't change and say you want to do what the government leave you to do that. Look, look at the Gulf Coast down Sandy Point. Where is the money that was spent on the Gulf Coast? Not one stroke about kick down your foot on the Gulf Coast. Hmm. We need to know where the money gone for the Gulf Coast. And also, Patches, we need to know about the money for Christoph Harbour. Who come in here, come say they come develop and borrow our money. We need to know what be, what has become of that. And now, Bede, Mr. Bede, um, he get money and nothing start yet. Everybody coming to St. Kitts before Team Unity go in there because the sure then that other people come here and they borrow money and they're gone, and nothing do, and then since Team Unity go in, and the, 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 the country has been providing surpluses, surpluses, that every year, everybody in government, so we get their, their double salary. So everybody now rushing in again now, come see how much money they could get from St. Kitts and do nothing. But I have more to say, so I'll come back. Let me give somebody a chance, and you read the email them so long, Patrick. I got a lot of things to say to Thank you very much, man. So long. Thank you very much, my dear brother. Yes, victimization uh, is rampant in the country. Let's go back to the lines at 13 or, yes, 13 past 9. Call you live. Hello, caller. Okay, we seem to have lost that caller. Uh, Let's see, this caller, caller, you are live. Hello, caller. Are you there, caller? Um, hello. Yes, my brother. Sounds like the Bible, man. How about thou? Well, <laughs> good night, Mr. Patton. Good night, brother John. How about thou? I'm fine. Now, I am waiting from First Timothy chapter 4. 
Pangwan. Now, the spirit speaks firstly that in the latter day, latter time, some shall depart from from thy faith, giving heed to Jewish spirit and doctrine of devil. Speaking lies in his hypocrisy, having their having their conscience filled with a hot iron. First Timothy chapter four, verse one and two, and number two says. Speak in hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with a hot iron. Mr. Patton? Yes, my brother. This is the word of God. It is not narrated in the Bible. And I am telling you tonight. We are in the last and closing days of time. And what the Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own self. And the list goes on. And I'm telling you tonight that. Whatever is happening today, the situation in it, it seems like the love of God gone through the door. But God said in Psalms 41, he said, blessed is the man that consider the poor in the time of trouble, the Lord shall deliver him. Now, when preachers support to preach the gospel and stand up, God, we are all of men of God to preach the word in season and out of season. We are called as watchmen. And the Bible says in Timothy, it says, you must support the, a bishop support the bishop. Pure, not greedy, not filthy lucre. But the time will come when they are going to give an account for all what done. And so we are watchmen over the city and we support the time that and preach the word of God. We had tell them what the word of God said and say, my dear, God is coming and he is coming for his chosen one who are blood washed. And I am going to end up with this in Second Corinthians. They talk about therefore in any man in Christ, they are a new creature. All things are part of it. Behold, all things come new. 
You could not, you can't put no wine in oil bottle. <laughs> no, me say so. I the word of God said. And I can tell you, the reason why I'm saying this tonight, that my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Psalm 37, verse 25. I was young. Yet. I never see the righteous forsaken. A begging bread. Now you see begging bread. I was young. No, I'm old. Yes. Yet I never see the righteous forsaken. Now you see begging bread. Mr. Pocket, in lamentation, this is last in lamentation, it tells you, it is the Lord mercy. That we are not consumed. But uh, we are nothing in this world. And if we put our confidence in God and God alone, God can see it too. Good night, Mr. Patis. Good night, my dear brother. Uh, thanks for the Bible verses. Pastor John James. Good night, Patches. The country is bleeding. Our young men, our sons, our daughters are being slaughtered in the streets. And Prime Minister Jude jumped on a plane and went to the hammers while Senkets bleeds. Prime Minister Jude said the majority of the killings happened in Central Bastia. Well, Patches, Armul Masha also jumped on a plane and went to New York. Or she don't want to face the people of Central Basity. Where is the news article and press release from SKNIS to tell us Prime Minister Drew and the Honorable Marshal ran overseas while St. Kitts was bleeding? Alexa Amory was on the peace program. So why did he get caught with a gun? I thought the peace program was working to curb a crime with this email. This other email writes, Listening to the police force press conference, I was wondering how some people get or got to the top. The only one who displayed intelligence was ACP Mitchell, who the claim is undermining the commissioner. Commissioner Sutton was struggling, and ACP Adam was all over the place. Simply, or simple question by the reporter, just could not answer with this email. Dear Patches, I'll dispense of some of the emails, my callers. Dear Patches, Sam and Dwyer are two of the most disgusting, ungrateful, and grudging politicians St. Kitts has ever seen. Dwyer simply hates progressive black people in this country. Patches Dwyer Astafan failed miserably as National Security Minister in the early 2000s. It was under his watch that the crime in St. Kitts escalated to unimaginable levels, especially during the days when Dwyer allowed Sam Condor to be publicly boasting about him and Zambo being close friends. That situation is what nurtured and fueled the drugs, crime, and violence in this country. What we are seeing today is a result of the evil seeds Sam and Dwyer planted amongst the young men, especially in McKnight, Newtown, and the village. Dwyer and Sam should not have been allowed to return to the Labour Party. It is those two failed ministers who are controlling Drew 
and continue to oppress Dr. Douglas. But wait patches, we will quickly see the demise of Dr. Drew because of Sam and Dwyer. It's 9.25, my straight dog family, if you have just joined me. If you have just joined me, we are in our thesis phase, so to speak, my straight dog family. And which is titled, There's a Course for Peace and for Conflict. And the point was made that in this world full of strife, any nation, any country that tries to reverse the order of priorities when it comes to dealing with peace and conflict does so at its own peril. And this was borne out, or is even being borne out, I should say, right here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Especially in the last five months, when we had 60 murders, and sad to say, there's a prediction that there will be many more. Peace is undoubtedly an essential precondition for all progress. And that in turn presupposes preparedness for conflict or war, be it gang war or other types of war. My straight dog family. Let's go back to the lines. At 926, uh, caller, you're live. Hello, caller. Yes, that is. I am back. And I'm here to talk about the burning issues that we have to get solution in the, in the Federation. Let me talk about the, the, the bus stop at the top of Bowie Longwood. That bus stop needs to be replaced because when people need to catch a bus and they have to stand up there, when we start to fall, the only place they can run, go and get shelter it down in Mr. Freight's business. Now, Patches, I want to say something again here. Crime is really spike up higher than Mount Loyamigo since Mr. Terrence Drew, Labour Party, took over the government. And the crime spike back up all because of Mr. Drew ignorance to come talk about he done away with the, with the peace program. Peace. We know what been happening. Know what been happening. The amount of homicide they had before Team Unity went into office, and the largest one was I think it's 2011, when we had what, 35 murders. 35, you know, in Little Saint Kitts, and then that is you all. Which we, 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 you are government, the government which you are part of, came into office and with Colonel Sanders and all the others who went around the island trying to see the reason why these criminal activities are taking place. You all come up with solution and the crime cut right down. I got a friend, he told me, and a big married man. He said, boy, he does hear us on the radio talking. But he gets him money for peace and he put it to progress. You know what he said, Patches? He bought a boat and he bought some wires and make fish pot. And he got three fellows going with him at the time, got pulling the fish pot. And the others who were in the gang that he was the head of, they cannot swim, so he don't care them out to see. So he put his peace money to something useful and others to put the peach mood up from the man coming to the thing. Sorry. Are you there, Carlo? Sorry, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. But I had to remove the way the way the way the radio. Go ahead, go ahead. you're live yeah. on radio, so go ahead. Yeah, no. No, other people they put the peach money to useful things. Now these crime here are happening. For a lot, a lot, a lot of reasons. But I'm not con condoning them. They are wrong. And I'm talking to Mr. Joe. 
Whatever you move from what was keeping on the piece, put it back. Because 24 murders in the space of 10 months doesn't sound good for an island 68 square mile. It doesn't sound good. Population is less than 51. Okay. I am calling on you to come up, put back things and let the country go. The amount of cameras they have up, cameras can only show you when the damage is done. But the camera cannot stop the culprit from committing the crime. We need more police on the ground and foot in all the communities and villages in both islands. As often as possible, patrol on foot. They cannot be here there anywhere, every tick of the clock. But where there is no police, ah oh boy, those who want to do the crime, it escalates because no one there to deter them and stop them. And the big solution supposed to start in Parliament. The little punishment that they have for people who murder people, kill people, that is no punishment for them. I am going to say what I have to say. They need capital punishment to come back and deal with them when they kill people. Get them out of the way. Get them out of the way. Innocent people, they walk in the business, all the money talk about where the money. What money? People setting up the flower to go back and they shot them, kill them. And they're in there eating taxpayers' money and others. That is not right. Uh -huh. I stop play with crime, put heavy penalty that others will be deterred. That is good night. Let somebody just come in. Yes, good night. Thank you. Uh, brother, uh, there's uh, really no evidence that proves that the civil penalties uh, really uh, reduce crime. I understand how you feel about that, but it's uh, 9.31, that's 29 minutes uh, before the 10 o'clock hour. Street Talk is heard every Monday and Thursday uh, from 8 to 10 in the p.m., Good evening, Patches. Read this email. It hurts my ear whenever I hear Sam uh, Dwyer, Sam Dwyer, Joel Clark, and Jeffrey talking about social programs. Let's take this call. I'll come back to that. My street dog family. Uh, are you there, caller? Hello, caller. Yes, are you there? Hello. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. How are you today? I am peaceful yourself. Oh, God, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, today I was listening to Harden speaking about housing, housing, hospitals, and planes. I have Harden speak about the school. What happened to the schools that they were supposed to be like here? That's a good question. They've been going to Parliament all the time. School in Molly News had gone down, they were supposed to fix it. Nobody said nothing about that. What happened to the children then? The school in Irish Town had an incident. I don't think the children then were happy. What happened to the high boys school the high boys school school they were the, the school they were supposed to build. Uh, huh? good, good questions, my dear. They've been talking about it all the time, and they were supposed to be, this school was supposed to be, I think they said they was supposed to be back in the same place, and nobody talking about what happened to the children then. Huh? How are they going to learn? They're talking about, um, people penalty for the, um, for the, for the murderers and them things. Where are they going to put them? Because I understand it, 1840 overcrowded. So where are they going to put them? Hello? Yes, well, there are some questions. They'll be answered in time, no doubt. <laughs> well, I, I mean, as far as I can say, I need about uh, answer about the school. The school is very important. Yes. Because for the children then. Because the housing in the school up in uh, some place where... They had um, the children them up in Molly News. What happened to the school? The school that they usually have down, down on the on the, uh, um, the main road. What happened to that? That is need to be fixed. Did the Irish school open as yet? That's a good question. Uh, that's something I'll have to investigate. But I don't think so, though. 
So I just talk a lot about them things that uh, housing and how big the bedrooms them gonna be, be and one thing and I hear him talk about education. True. I think this education is very important. So then therefore they're supposed to get the schools and ready for the children and to get the education. And where what happened to Mr. Jew is these advisors that he have these bad advisors that he have in there, that is why the country going to the bad advisors because they decide is vengeance. They want vengeance. I heard some of them talking about it. And that's what happened. So Jew just going on the floor because he not them put him in and that's why he, he's going to to listen to what they're saying. He even come and said I said in the morning, Jazzy D and, and somebody else used to come out early morning. Sometimes you wake up early, you hear them. No, no, nothing about that again. Since they change the ZIZ the, the board, put in all sorts and all kind of people from the ZIZ board who don't really have no understanding. These things need to fix. And the country is not going nowhere. It's not going nowhere. This is June. The house in them was supposed to start June. And June almost finished now. And nothing start, not in the sample. They say not bring out some pictures at the house. Pictures is deceiving. You see something, but when you see it natural, it's something else. True. We're supposed to build an example that we they can see with the eyes and see. And again, the cost, as the cost of the house is for those who overseas will able to pay for those houses, not no natural people in St. Kitts. Because when you send a dollar down there, it's two sixty five or two seventy two sixty seven or whatever. It's not a dollar for a dollar. So tell me something is these overseas people what go down to vote and get the houses. Then who go down to vote. People outside here did not go to vote or uh, didn't vote I mean they gonna get a house. I mean I'm not looking for any anyhow. So anyway you take care. Yes, my dear. Thanks a lot for your intervention. I do apologize for the quality of that call. I've been having some difficulty with my overseas line. Let's go to the local line. Call out. Thank you for holding your life. Hi, Mr. Live. How are you going? I am peaceful, my brother. Yourself? Not too bad at all. Just to continue where that lady left off with houses. I was listening to the parliament today. And it was really a parliament of government ministers making statements. Also, what do you call them? Statements by ministers. Bulletin board. Nothing Bull- else. Bulletin board, it sounded like. Just, okay, but just an <laughs> elong- elongated bulletin board then. Yes, yes. Because they really, they, 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 I don't understand why they went to parliament today anyway. But one, two, two things I must bring up here. One, the Minister of Housing, Mr. Handley, he was speaking about um, the recent housing fear that they had at NHC. And it had come after, I think, Dwyer, I think it had complained about the size of the bedrooms in the one-bedroom houses. Uh, they were 10 by 10 or something in the sort. Hmm. And the receivers of the people who went to this housing fear complained about it. So he's now saying that the houses, all of them, are going to be bigger. But they're going to cost the same amount of money, which to me seems a bit odd. Strange. Don't you find? Strange, yes. They were, they were ripping us off before then. Yeah, thank you. So, <laughs> obviously. And I, I don't have the fact that in the, 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 it, I mean, they consider the fact that um, labor costs in Sankey's, like construction costs, uh-huh. is higher in Sankey's than it is in Trinidad. Because uh-huh. our wages are generally higher than Trinidad. Our dollar is higher than theirs. And, and that plays a part too. And I don't know if that is the reason why they're reluctant to build these two sample houses that they, 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 they're supposed to be building for us now here. But I'm, I'm very concerned that you're going to be building the large, larger houses for the same amount of money. Yeah, it's the, right. Does that mean that the quality is going to go down? It's only, you know, walls? It's only the 200 square feet uh, larger. I know. <laughs> That's the same cost, you know. That to me sounds very fishy. Yes, yes. I'm very yeah. suspicious of that. And especially since you say you've already signed a contract. Exactly. So the, the contract now needs changing. You have to sign a new contract. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Of course, of course. Yeah, amend the contract. 
<laughs> Revise the contract. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the other issue I had with today's statements, the bulletin board, was that um, the, the Prime Minister, Mr. Jew, talked fast, fast. But he was talking about the, the refugees, the Cameroons and the Haitians. I, I'm particularly concerned about the 14 Haitians that came on shore some time ago, mm -hmm. and then there was a case, and I'm you know, free, I understand. But what he's saying is that they were traveling from Dominica to St. Martin, and they ended up, they, they had engine problems, he says, and that the Coast Guard had to go and rescue them and bring them ashore. But my understanding is that the Haitians were landing at Gallows Bay in Nevis, near to Bat Village. I don't think Coast Guard is going to go out there and pick up, rescue a boat that seems to be off course in the first instance mm -hmm. and bring them into Nevis, they'll probably bring to the, to the facility, say, kiss the Coast Guard facility. True. So something doesn't sound too right there. So he got up and said they were rescued. But he went on to say later on that the, the crew are in, are, are in confinement. So if you had engine problems and everything was above more, why lock up the crew? Somebody is fooling somebody. And I say he lied, you know, but he's fooling us. <laughs> he's not, he not coming straight. I don't want to call our good prime minister a liar. But he is fooling us. <laughs> our population, our 50,000 people, he making a mockery of us. He must come honestly to us because people can see through some of what he said. I am not stupid. If you rescue somebody, you don't put crew in confinement. Thank you, Patches. Well, they got to jail, like, actually. They sentenced to prison. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, from what I gather, the, the crew has been sentenced to prison for human trafficking, if that's the charge. Uh, but the point about the housing is a very, very interesting one. I think you, you have increased the, the, the space by about 200 square feet uh, at no additional cost. Uh, but important though, let's see the models, Minister Handley. Good, good evening, Patches. It hurts my heart whenever I hear Dwyer, Drew, <laughs> Excuse me there. It hurts my heart whenever I hear Drew, Dwyer, and Sam, Joel Clark, and Jeffrey talking about social programs. But I have a message to Senkit's voters. Senkit's people don't let the politicians fool you. They are calling down the social programs, but little do you know that their social programs are the big advisory positions getting $10,000 per month with other benefits. They're getting an all the plane rides, giving them per diem for every day they are out of the country and living big in all kinds of five-star hotels when some of you can't even find bus fare to go to work at mornings. $500 is too much for you, the voters. They begged you for their votes. Now they are not answering their phones because they are in London, Switzerland, and all over the place. It's almost one year since the elections, and the real winners are not you, the voters, but are people like Larry Vaughan, infamous Big Lies, Joel Clark, and Philip, who nobody voted for, and all the ministers of government who pocketed the 10,000 faithfully while you can't even pay your bills and buy food to put in your stomach. Begging and borrowing is now the order of the day in St. Kitts. Read that email. It's now 16 before the nine, 10 o'clock hour. We go back to the lines. Caller, you live. Hello, caller. Are they caller? Yes, yes. How are you? I am peaceful yourself. What can I say? So far, so good. Uh, listen, well, it's going to be good. It's just that they're going to build these houses in our country. But I would really say, you know, we are in this, in, in, in our constituency, it's 
Sadler's area that they're going to put these out. How much houses they're going to put for constituency? Understand? They're going to put 2,000 something. So we are going to take up them in everyone. But they haven't come out and said they're going well, to give you four years, five years, nothing. I mean, these people just, just starting, 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 and we are, we are even hold them to say, well, listen, ah, you got all these big out. But we are going to put those to sample house again. They're going to put them in town for you to spend money to go in town to see them. They're going to put them in the country for you to spend town, money from town to come to the country to see them. We are. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. Mr. Chesak, you do what you got to do. You continue to do what you got to do. You, you're doing a good job. And I just give God thanks for you. Take care of yourself. See you when I see you. Be good. See you when I see you, my straight dog family. Over there. Sounds like Philadelphia. I, I got that right. Uh, my straight dog family. It's 15 before the 10 o'clock hour. You may have just joined me, my straight dog family. We are looking tonight at peace. And the, there's a cause for peace. But there's also a cause for conflict or for war. And as I said earlier, I must repeat it, that in this world full of strife, any nation that tries to reverse the order of priorities when it comes to dealing with peace and conflict does so at its own peril. And that has been translated here in St. Kitts over the last five months in particular. Or I can say the last ten months, to be correct. Because for the last ten months we've had some 24 homicides. And There are going to be more. Sad to say that. That's the word on the street. And the question to ask ourselves is whether peace is a thing for which it is worthwhile to pay a price. Patches, good evening, reads this email. I am back once again. No patches, the Department of Technology is at it again. Imagine a staff who was working in that department passed away two weeks ago. When the staff member passed away, Congress's auntie, who is the, still the permanent secretary, was off island gallivanting again, using government's money and trips to bring back empty information because she has no clue what she is doing. Now, Patches, she has been back for over a week now, and it took her after being back for one week to have a meeting with the staff, just Friday gone, to express her fake grievances. Not even Congress has expressed con condolences to the staff, nor the families, and he is always on social media parading like a clown, which he sure is. No patches, not even a wreath that woman has that wreath, that woman has no compassion to buy and place on the door of that department. She has no compassion, no morals, no respect whatsoever. That is why the staff dealt with her in a meeting over one year ago. Patches, I want Congress's auntie to know that the staff said only because Nigel Carty was a part of that meeting Friday, they did not deal with her like they did over a year ago because they hold plenty respect for Nigel. Congress and his auntie needs to pack up and go, just like how she's off island again gallivanting and so-called uh, government uh, trips. 
she might her Nigel friend she has doing her dirty work because the staff says it doesn't matter where they go they are unhappy and once not one piece of information they bring back let's go back to the lines call you live Hello, Carl. Good evening, Mr. Labor. Good evening, sir. Um, I'm just trying to make a comment, first of all, on your housing issue. First of all, the, the political leaders and saying this needs to stop lying to people, pure and simple. Now, we might limit it now, and let me say limited, because we have had some, some, some exposure to law. I'm not an attorney, but I do know a contract has to have three parts. It has to have an, an offer, an exception, and a consideration. So if the Chinese government offered to build some houses, and the government of Singh has accepted that offer, and, and, the, and the, there might be a consideration, if the attorney general is saying that the government has not put up any money, then there is no contract because you have to have money at the table to complete a contract. We could, we, could, we could have a verbal agreement. When you use the word contract, there must be consideration. So my question is, what is the consideration? And the truth is, Mr. Attorney General, do we have a contract or don't we have a contract? If we have, because, because if you're gonna go to court for, 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 for non-performers, there has to exist a contract. And there must be a continuation clause. So how much money did the government have saying advance to this this Trinidad company to complete the contract? Because if they have not paid any money, then there is no contract. Secondly, on the crime issue, I want us to, to go back to 1999 when Mr. Dreyer asked to find what was made Minister of National Security. On a Sunday night, just prior to the 20th of the 2000 election, on Central Street, right across from Sister Rose Church, where he was denigrating the character of Constance Mitchell. And he was also assuring the, 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 the young men in a uh, Central Basket, he said, as long as I represent you, no, no drug squad, SSU, or police could come in and harass you. Well, he was saying that as Minister of Minister of Tourism, you can go down to, to Maroon Avenue, you $150 and buy a 38 revolver. Now you're wondering why you have all this killing that's going on coming out of all these gun crimes, coming out of my neck, because they know that's what they went, but I'm simply saying, the police and the Prime Minister would uh, should have considered that a seditious statement and take the appropriate action. They did not. So now we are reaping, we are reaping the rewards of all the stuff that, uh, of the seeds that we have to perhaps plant it. Secondly, when you talk about peace, there can be no peace in St. Kitts as long as Timothy Harris is alive. Because one of, one of your most bad, violent, <coughs> one of your most violent politicians in St. Kitts is Timothy Harris. I heard him, this is not the Democrat, this is me, I heard him. Right there in Mourinho, telling the people of Philips, the rich taxi service come down, come down here. To do that, anything he wants, the one and he would represent. So he was a member of parliament, encouraging the people to, 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 to have a violent reaction against our first prime minister and promising to back them. Be in mind, this man was supposed to be a member of parliament and a justice of the peace. And he was telling the people to go ahead and commit a very act against our first prime minister. Now you're, now you're wondering why we have so much problems in the place. 
we need, we need to take great care and attention to who we elect. And just going to church on Sunday and pray <coughs> not in the head. Because the Bible was very clear. It is shed man's blood innocently. By man's hand must your blood be shed. It's written right there in Genesis. I'm simply saying to you, and the future of saying you, be careful. Look at your history, learn to read. Because my heart beats for my country, because I know in the next 20 years, the level of violence that's going to erupt is going to, is, is going to be frightening. And then erupt over water. Now, there is no reason why you people in Kayan should have a water problem. And this nonsense with, 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 about with, with Dr. Handy, <laughs> and Jeffrey Handy talking about the country in Kayan. What are you doing in Kenya for? In 1954, or 55, somewhere around there, the rage hit the Maoist took me and some other students up to bring him back into the source. So we saw all this water going out the ground. And we couldn't get none incentive to drink because, what? The water had to go to the sugar factory for the white man to use. Yes, I understand. And of course, of course, Neil did, Mr. Butcher had other problems to deal with. So he was trying to look for our, 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 and you're telling me that the people in Kayan still have a water problem. Because what they did, they took, they took the money, they took the water from there. Okay, if you go up to Monkey Hill, when you get, by, when you get there as you pass through the street and you get to the corner, you have a water pipe. I will give you very cold water no matter how hot that is. That pipe, that pipe comes from the source in Kayan. So the people in Kayan and Monkey Head shouldn't have a water problem, but they divert the water to the sugar factory. Now the sugar factory is closed. The water is diverted to, to suit the people in, in, in the city there. And I'm simply okay. saying is that one, one day, next, a new, a new generation is going to come up and they're not going to take the answers. Okay. No. Where are, you, where are you driven well in Kenya? I mean, all you could do is go down to Hermitage, uh, just, just go to the manager's house, another level place, and put them at the salination plant to take water from the sea. Yes, you will need a, 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 a lift pump. You are ahead of about 100 feet, and you could have those pumps. And take that water from right there and turn it into fresh water and pipe it up to Kayan. Okay. Kayan should not have any water problem. But they keep listening to people with PhD. PhD means pile it deep. That's all you mean. You don't mean anything else. Okay. So I'm simply saying that people need to pay attention. We look at your history and then vote accordingly. You keep voting for these liars and then expect better results. It can't happen. Thank you. May God bless you and have a good evening. Thank you for your input. May God bless you as well, my dear brother. I do apologize for uh, the quality of that overseas call. Been having some difficulty uh, with that line. Let's see if this call is still holding. Caller, you there? Good night. Good night. Good night, my dear brother. Politics, it sounds like. How are you? Yeah, this is Mr. Politics. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah. I ain't going to listen to the opening statement because all the data and for over three days now, I'm trying to get the data, the data to work. And I am a digital customer. Hmm. I, 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 I can get the call of them out. But I can't get the data out. So I we with that internet, you know. So that's why I get into listening to you 
I didn't get to hear your opening statement or whatever. But that is first, you know, that me always want to thank God for life. Thank God for the federation of Sink It Nevis. A country you are born into. Never live nowhere but Sink It. Never live anywhere. I might take a little vacation, but never live nowhere out of Sink It and contribute to my country as a hard working man and a farmer. Agriculture farmer and a livestock farmer. I'm sure to do it for myself. And the people of this federation, especially the school, the young people. Because I can't see young people suffer. I ain't get much in school. And that's why I, say I, lo I love to see our young men and women in the federation come something. So any little thing we got, that is how we reach out to the school. I reach out to the, the churches, them too. Because the churches, them play a good, a, 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 a vital role. In the past, we were young people coming up with the Sunday school and everything. You know, a man from Monk Hill in Brother Mac. From Monk Hill, back in the 70s, when we was a little boy come up. He used to bring a little sweetie and everything, and the with little Sunday school program. And I never hear no, all kind of ignorance with you, our young young children them yet. The young children, the young people, them primary school. Then I always look at the parents, then I always look at the grandparents. Then I always look at the body call. My body work in the, in the mouth. And because what? That is lack of parents in the young parents then. But that is, I want to say, this is thinking and love thinking. Me this. And whatever government in, I tell you from the unity this way, any government in this country, I respect it. And I will look to see good for the country and any administration, whether unity, whether PAM, whether PLP, whether Labour or whatever. I want to see my country good, the good. Because the blindness of politics out of my mind, out of my head. Patty said it to say that I called in a talk show from Andy Mark first the night. And I, uh, uh, you know, called in a tell Mark because he was just talking about the crime and everything and everything, you know. And I called him tell him that plain that Mark, you know that how strong me and culture adults used to be to get a change for unity government to co come in. And after just five years, when they don't so do so well, and the COVID, and the COVID, do so well with the crime and everything, and get these young men together, and stop shooting one another. You get to what something happened, something happened, you get to what? Something happened. Young men will be meeting one another, young men get business, they get the own entrepreneur. They, they get money that they, some of them squandered, and he have none of different administration. I call into Andy Mark Thursday night. I mean, Tuesday, I mean, Wednesday night, Wednesday night. And I was talking about, I was, talk, I was telling Mark that because of the, of the failure of the unity, that's why the state of how the country be now, because, because of this year. Because of this year for me, that, that I want the failure for the unity government. And cars come, PLP and everybody to break up. He said, look, he looks, look, 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 he's saving in government still. I say, yeah, because everybody, everybody don't make sure you fool, Sean. You make, you make sure you're a fool, you do, you do, you do, you do. A young lady calling to, calling after don't talk. And said that, me don't abuse you. Tell me, me don't abuse the pan, he program. I I I because Mark, I can't just look over, just look over, just look over calling for the program and I say, no. I say to Mark, and a million, a million years, a, a million years, think it. Right, that is, uh, was an, uh, an, was an radio talk show coming up to election, and it was an radio talk show. And he loved two people, he loved two people. And, you know, what a millionaire take money, though? The all 
Farm, farm, prime minister who don't serve the country. Ten thousand dollars. Some of them refuse it. I'm going to talk about the poor people. I love the country. I love think it. I love poor people. But yes, I ain't have, I ain't have nobody to be used. I ain't have nobody to be used. I want to see the, the best for my country. And I want to see labor do what they got to do. Because they make the people in promises for election. And I want to see a hospital bill. I want to see a school bill. And I want to see all them things done. But it wouldn't be a great man home, maybe. And talk the good things what the government is doing. I don't want to cut for things. I don't want to cut for a policy country because after election, I don't want to get... I almost lose my life after election. Shitting in all kind of things. And you know, people check me, you know, for things. But it's you know, your wonderful night. The God bless again this federation and God bless you too. Because I see that you is the opposition. And we is the opposition. And we will, we will talk. We will, we will, we will see. We will. I don't, a lot of people make me tell me, but up to today, I'm not going to make me. I think it's not your calling, you're not calling. No, you're calling, you're calling. You're not calling. Say, you, but what do you want to do about? What do you want to do about? You want to check? You got to issue calling, but you're sure. Okay. But is that anything with 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 Really not the opposition as your host. I remain, as I said, an untiring advocate of truthfulness. On this program, nothing is watered down in any way, whether by omission or exaggeration, to make it more in- interesting. I consider it my duty to always present, always present the unvarnished truth about governance in my country as a stickler f- for continuing improvement or continuous improvement. Carlo, you laugh. Hello, Carlo. Hello, Carlo. What is? I almost missed the boat, my brother. Why am I? I missed you. I was sleeping. You were sleeping. Why am I not? I'm peaceful, man. I'm peaceful. What is? I want to tell the federation and think it's serious. To make sure every man come over to, to Dr. Harris' convention. It's what he does. It's a mess. It's a mess of nothing. That they don't even go on and read when he done it then. Because he's a very good speaker and a leader. So we want to tell everybody to come and hear what he wants them to say. Because he's better than the rest. He's better than them. I think you have a good night. Have a good and God bless Mr. Harris. Have a good night Happy as well. Have a good night, my brother. Have a good night as well, my brother. And that's an oversight. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, the PLP convention uh, would be convened on Saturday. Saturday, the 17th of June at the Tabernacle Recreation Grounds. Uh it has a time. Does it have a time of start? It does not. But someone can tell us what's the time. But we'll have time to remind you. Oh, 4 p.m. That's right. 4 p.m. on Saturday, the, the PLP convention uh, would be convened at the Tabernacle Recreation Ground by Straight Dog Family. Good night, Patches. Reads this email. Your program is the most popular talk show in the country. However, you need to add an investigative department into Straight Talk. We are hereby asking you again to find out how many advisors and or ambassadors, directors, are working out of the Prime Minister's office. And who are these persons? And how much are they paid monthly? We need to see their certificates too and qualifications for the position and their job description. Uh, reads this email. 
Jew is taking the country for a ride and is very unkind to the government treasury. How much longer does Jew expect to be doing these unethical acts, which are political hacks? He says the country is in the red, but yet he is hiring more and more advisors, including pensioners and political supporters. Uh, very interesting because I, I did, in fact, I went to a funeral this afternoon and I heard reference made to Ambassador Asim Martin. I wonder how many ambassadors do we have in this country. Call your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know why the lady come on and tell Mr. Mark Bradley about me using him on your program? Because she has a friend of mine. We took her to meeting together. Yes, she had a, a, a good friend relationship. Yeah, but uh, why? why, but, why? Uh, mm. Go ahead quickly. Uh. But that is no, no. That is, let me tell you. That is it, yeah? Yeah, go ahead, uh, culture. I mean, politics. Yeah, Patin. Patin. Yes, politics, your life. Go ahead. Patin. Yes, no, we... I, I, no, no, I mean, I come with nothing. Not, not, not because I'm in the sugar money where I work for in the sugar industry, Patin. Because, because me, she was kind of good friend. She want half the money. And because she ain't get, she ain't get none. She want half get none at all. Who want half get none at all? That's what caused the will let me and she punish him to be bitter and say a negative thing about me. Yeah, but that's 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 home. And they want that people in this country can't change to political party they want to change too. This is our country. Everybody can think it. If you want if you want to be a labor, be a labor. If you want to be a PLP, be a PLP. If you want to be a PAM, be a PAM. Nobody could tell me what, what it is. I work hard for myself. Come since me 16 years, me try hard before 16. When I started for social providence for I started working for this country, you know. But I didn't go back none because I, I come in late. You understand? So, mm -hmm. Tell all the negative people, and the time labor and all of them, who do good for the country and who perform for the country and do well, when we let them, they will get me politics to put next to them. But it's over one opponent. God bless again. God bless you as well, Mr. Politics. Uh, which team unity into when when team unity introduced, beg your pardon, the peace program, they meant peace. This there was peace and peace was there. But on the labor, peace is war and he has the nerve to blame the peace for mishandling of the country. There is something incorrect with the Labour government on a whole, on a whole, and when you listen to them speak it, it's always if this and if that. They're never sure, never. The if government is a new name for the Labour Party. Them says from the head stink, so is the body. Just how do behaving the police following in his footsteps, especially those who came to the press conference. The PM Jew have an ink, doesn't have an inkling with this email. But whose idea was it for Jew to run for prime minister? What is with this in many, many minor more government? Some said he's a good doctor. Well, Laws is a good doctor. Also, but you ain't see him running for prime minister. It takes a certain skill to be the prime minister, and Drew doesn't have it. He's a disappointment, the biggest there is, and I'm ashamed he came out of St. Kitts. When he travels, do they say the Labour government or the government of St. Kitts, Nevis? Because again, my days of Labour are done with. If the government before was there, those people would still be alive, reads that other email. This other email reads, Good evening, Patches. I hope my emails get, get read. I have made several attempts to get in contact with you. However, it is said to say that this government, who portrayed themselves as the second coming of Christ, has left a very bad taste in the mouths of petitions. 
Patches, I was taken for a ride by a development bank for a loan to revive my small business. Business. It took me three applications only to be declined all three times. And mind you, I was told by a high official in the bank that I'm a poor, I'm a good candidate, beg your pardon, for the loan. It turned out that the official strung me along several months. Every time I asked him what's the status, he would have a new excuse. I got fed up of him and I took to the bus. I, I, I took my last beggar pardon. I could have gone to a plan B while I was wasting months with this guy. He has no ethics. He's a liar. And I have lost all respect for him since that and during I've seen many persons got their loans approved. I guess I live in the wrong village and I have never wore a labor shirt. Shame on you, Mr. Chairman. Shame on you, Development Bank, for playing politics with people's livelihood. Reads that email. And I'll take this final email, uh, which reads, A great sickness has gripped our beautiful federation, likened to a cancer where the symptoms have gone ignored. Now we scamper around, hoping for miracles. Our education system, our churches, our communities, some fathers and mothers have failed our beautiful boys and girls, early on categorizing them as failures. We leave them susceptible, ripe for the harvesting by other seasoned gang members. Within these gangs, they find love, admiration, and purpose, etc. All the things we did not show them, when we had the opportunity to. Now as big men and women hardened in their habits and reasoning, we again categorize them as vagabonds and villains and willing to blame anyone who tries a different approach for our present situation sick. Reads that email. And I got a message from someone earlier and which suggested to me that the lady who called about the Irish Town School uh, I have it resumed, but where I'm living, reads this message. Up to this morning, I saw a lady walking her daughter to the school in Irish Town, school uniform, and even as far back as last week, uh, I think this started, reads that message. That's the way we're going to end it for our calls, end it for our messages, because, yes, my time is done, and i got to run. We look tonight, my straight dog family, at the thesis, there's a cause for peace and for conflict. And I made a point earlier as well, my straight dog family, that the question to ask ourselves, or even before asking ourselves the question, I made the point that in this world of strife, any country that tries to reverse the order of priorities when it comes to dealing with peace and conflict, does so at its own peril. And this is borne out as we speak here in St. Kitts, especially since the appointment or election of this new administration, our Jew administration. Under his watch as Minister of National Security, he has had some 24 murders, five, or, or 16 rather, in the first five months of this year. I should talk family, peace is undoubtedly an essential precondition for all progress, and that in turn presupposes preparedness for conflict or for war, whether it is a gang war or other types of war. My street dog family, the question we pose tonight is whether peace is a thing for which it is worthwhile to pay a price. If not, it must be one of three things. It can be obtained without a price. It cannot be obtained at all. Or peace is not worth having. Which one of us at this present moment would be willing to stand on any of these three propositions? The Labour Party were in opposition by its actions and criticisms of the peace program. 
which has the capacity to create the behavioral changes that are necessary in this society, said loudly that peace was a thing not worth having. They perpetuated rumors that the government was paying money for peace or facilitating gang members with loans obtained from engagement process. But if that was so, so what? I said the United Nations paid thousands of cash to Serbian rebels for peace in the northern Bosnia Herzegovina. I say the European Union and the World Bank contributed hundreds of millions of dollars to try to stop the war. I think it was in Mozambique. At times, different organizations and countries have used all means necessary to stop the bleeding and dying of citizens. And if we could stop it, our young men in particular, who are dying in the streets by creating jobs and giving them an opportunity to earn a living through legitimate means, so what? Above all, any country devoted to the cause of peace must have faith that it is worth having and in a measure at least it can be obtained. My straight dog family, each advance in human welfare involves adjustment, compromise and sacrifice on the part of somebody. If peace is worth a price, how large and what kind of price it is worth? How large a price in money is it worth? My sweet dog family, as I close tonight, I suggest to you that the peace program has been a catalyst that fostered an alternative lifestyle to crime and violence while advocating and upholding civility. It generated maximum employment opportunities and reinforced a culture of business ownership, industriousness, legitimate endeavors amongst target groups. My straight dog family, there's a price of conflict to the human race. The idea is to examine this course not only in terms of the deaths and casualties and the economic costs borne by the people involved, but also the social, developmental, environmental, and strategic costs of conflict. In most cases, organizations measure and analyze the economic and broader development costs of conflict. My straight dog family, while this conventional method of assessing the impact of conflict is fairly in-depth, it does not provide a comprehensive overview of a country embroiled in conflict. Are we in Senkits embroiled in conflict? And our young sons and daughters too are slaughtered. Let's conclude tonight, my street dog family. And let's concur that there's a cause for peace and a cause for conflict. That's my story, and I'm not going to change it. But I'll just thank Almighty God in the process for guiding our conversation tonight as always. I thank you, the many listeners, those who called, those who sent emails, remember all of you are the ones who make straight up. And for that reason, I say a big, big thank you. I am Ian Patches Lyburn, and God's will. Let's connect on Thursday for another edition of Straight Talk. Until that time, be good to yourselves and to all whom you meet. And remember, whatever your mind conceive, that you will achieve. 
But all you got to do, my straight talk family, is to believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank him for taking you through the night. And my straight talk family, keep moving on. Bye-bye. Until we connect on Thursday for another edition of Straight Talk. Keep moving on. That I will achieve, you better believe. Brethren, kind and good